Welcome to Empowered Kids TV Village Talk. I am so excited to have you here. You're here because you know that every family has the potential to be great and you're willing to push the boundaries of your mindset so that you can create the family of your dreams. Today we have Louise back with us again. Louise, I'm so excited to have you back. For those of you that have watched our previous episodes and for those of you that are new, please subscribe and go back and watch previous episodes with Louise. Louise has a deep compassion to support and empower parents with a compassionate and realistic approach to help them find sustainable and practical solutions to their everyday challenges. She believes that there is no cookie cutter approach to parenting. What works for one child might not work for the other and what works in one moment might not work for the next. Louise works with parents to help them find a way that works for them and their children. A mom of three and a parenting coach, you can find loads of information and support from Louise at yourparentingpartner.com. Louise, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Nicole. Great to be here. I love being here and chatting with you and help, helping parents in your village. All right. So today's question comes from Steph and Steph writes, my nine year old son has an allotted time for screen time. Sometime after his time is up, he starts having a tantrum. He starts screaming and kicking and trashing on the couch, knocking the lamp over and items down. I tell him to take space to calm down, but stay close to him and I let him know I'm here if he just wants to talk or needs a hug, etc. But he just continues to throw things in his room and trash and roll around and yell and scream. What do I do? I've given him space to calm down before talking. What do I say? I tried sympathizing earlier, but I can't think he was too far gone at that point for me to help him when he's in a tantrum. What are your thoughts on video games if you see explosive behavior resulting from it? Do you allow unlimited or limited time or none at all? Big one. And only 10 minutes. Well, I could speak for, I could speak for two or three hours on this alone. So I hope we manage to get all the little the things we need to, to, to um, suggest to help this mom and to help many moms because this is a beast for yes, us to have to navigate it is. as parents. The whole technological beast, we can't live with it, we can't live without it. Mm. And, you know, it's how do we live with it so it doesn't control us? And how do we help our children live with it so it doesn't control them? They don't become addicted to it. Um, there's so much going on here. And as much as we've got a lot of information, there's still a lot of information we don't have. Yes. But you know, this, this boy is nine. It sounds like he has got allotted time for screen time. Yes. And this mom, I think, did ask, sh should we have, should we have um, screen limits on screen time? That's an individual decision that you could make. Mm. But for me, I, I always uh, allotted screen time for, for, for my three kids. The other important question to ask here is, you might allot the screen time, but what is it? that your child is watching what games are they playing there is a lot of evidence and research now pointing to the fact that video games increase aggression and in, in in viewers so it has to be taken seriously and you know i know i mean as as most parents know when their kids have been on screens for too long they're like zombies mm -hmm. just from playing from playing tame games they're like <laughs> never mind when they're playing not tame games yes and yeah. of which there are many yeah. and you know many of these games are for are, are u18 you know they're they're rated 18 and there's 9 10 12 year olds playing mm. these games and the games are way beyond the capacity of a 9 mm. 10 and 11 year old brain to even comprehend that's right so I think it is something that needs to be taken way more seriously than it is. And I'm not saying no screen time either, because, you know, kids in today, their lives involve screens. Yeah. To, so to say, to say no is also not going to help them. But we want them to be able to say no to things that they know are not good for them. And for as long as it takes, we need to set the boundaries and hold the limits for such a time until they're able to begin to take control of the boundaries and limits for themselves because that's the ultimate goal that's right because if we were always the ones doing it 
they get to the age 18 and they go off to college and now we're not here or the the device isn't here to shut the wi-fi off at 11 which means they can't play it mm -hmm. but now at college they can play it all night mm -hmm. if they don't have what it takes within them to be able to control it for themselves then it's not really going to serve them when you're not there so you know there's so many things we have to do as parents i think to help our children navigate the world of technology i love that and there's there's two things you touched on that i'd like to pick up on one it's it's the content so it's not just mm -hmm. the time but the content and i think the content is really important there are a lot of games that are being touted as games available for kids that really no one should really play in my opinion um and i think the research is very clear on what happens within even an adult brain when you play violent games, much less a nine-year-old. So that's that's definitely the first thing to really consider. Is your kid really being exposed to a lot of aggression? Because then what do you expect to come out? Yeah, if you, if, and what his a, behavior is, you know, it would seem that his behavior might be reflecting or mirroring the behavior that yes. he's seeing in the online world, perhaps. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm making an assumption here, but you know, if he's watching or playing violent video games, his behavior is simply reflecting that. Yes. Um, you know, his, his behavior seems quite explosive. It seems quite impulsive. It seems quite reactive. Um, so, you know, what, what is he playing? What is he watching? Mm. And maybe it's influencing how he is behaving in the real world. The, the second thing that I think is really important is, again, going back to the piece of empowering kids. And I think what really helps is to give kids information about what is happening. Games are designed to be addictive. That's the reality. It's, it, there, are, there are huge amounts of marketing tools um, and psychology based into the design of games to make sure you're addicted and you mm -hmm. want to play. And what I've found is that parents that are really successful at showing kids what happens in the design of a game and why it's designed to be addictive and what's the point of you being addicted to the game and then relating that to different things in life that you can be addicted to so that they can measure and see how there are things that are affecting their lives taking control over their lives rather than giving them the control for themselves kids then back off and go no 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 no, no. you don't get you don't get to do that to me I get to yeah, choose yeah. for me. So I, I think, control me. Yeah, I choose for me. So I think mm -hmm. really empowering kids with information is is one of the ways that can help when you when you want to stick to an allotted screen time without having the the backlash of a tantrum. Because if a kid knows, okay, beyond this point, you control me rather than I control me, I'm gonna back off now. So it's it's one of the mm -hmm. things that I would definitely recommend that this this mom and dad try. Yeah, and there's also a very good organization called commonsense.org. You've maybe heard of them, but yes. it's a really great website. Uh, go into it and have a look. It gives all sorts of valuable information on everything to do with video games. The other point I don't want to, to overlook here is this mum actually asked, you know, she said, what do I do? Um, I think she said she gives them space to calm down, but what do I say? Yes. And I think this raises a really good point because... In the heat of the moment, a child's feelings need to be validated. In the heat of the moment, the screen's been shut down. He's wild and angry because of it. But it's, it's all feelings are okay. Mm. And we want our children to know that all feelings are okay. But I think as parents, we sometimes struggle with accepting the feeling because we confuse it with accepting the behavior. And we need to separate the child from the behavior. So the child's feelings are okay. It's the behavior that's not. And they need to, so we validate the feelings, but we're not validating the behavior. It's okay for him to be feeling angry and frustrated and uh, because of whatever. But what is the unmet need beneath the behavior? Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to what is the unmet need beneath the behavior? The iceberg, you know, we're just seeing the tip of it. There's a lot going on beneath. Um, so we can validate the feelings, but that does not mean they get away with the behavior. So dealing with the behavior off the back of, of his feelings here, they're two separate things. So in the moment, validate the child's behavior. I see you're feeling really frustrated right now. I, you know, I, rem I know what it feels like to be frustrated. It's a really difficult thing to, to have to move through, but you'll get through it. 
and sit with them while they're feeling the way they are. And then in a, in quiet times, you know, maybe look at what, why is it you think you get so frustrated when you play these games? And as you say, the more information that we can help give our children to help them understand why the game makes them feel the way mm. they do. And do they want to be controlled by a video game? Does he want to feel like this? Mm. Does he like feeling like this? And he'll probably say, no, mommy, I don't, but I just can't help it. Mm. And it will help us be empathetic towards them because when they're in that moment and they're like a beast, a wild beast, it's very disconcerting for us as mm. parents. Like, what do we do? So we react to their reaction mm. and then we both get caught in it. Mm. So really we have to control ourselves in the face of their behavior, but to validate their feeling in the heat of the moment is a really powerful place to start. That's that's awesome, Louise. And there's an analogy that I give parents in trying to define where the teaching moment is and where the moment of validating and creating a safe space is. And I say to them, if your home was on fire, nobody stands and goes, who lit the candle and put it next to the curtain? Who didn't check the batteries in the smoke detect? Nobody does that. When when there's a fire, you put your arms around everybody, you make sure everybody's safe, and you get out to safety. That's what you do. Once it's safe and you're back in your home, then that's when you check, yeah? How do we make sure the candles are away? But in the heat of the fire, it's just the opportunity to create safe space. And nothing creates a safer space for any human being, a child or adult, than to know that I see you and I hear you and I really understand how you feel. So to validate for me is the ultimate safe space to know that you see me. You're not judging me. You just see me for who I am in my pain at this moment. And I think that's one of the best things that this mom can do because she is creating the safe space. She's, she's, she's sat with him. She says, I'm here if you need me. She just doesn't know what to say next. Absolutely. And I think also in this situation, you know, in every struggle or challenge we have as parents, even the nice things, the non-struggles, mm. we create, we co-create the reality that exists. Yes. And right now, this is the reality. It's been co-created yes. by many things that are yes. going on in this family. And I would need to speak to them more to, to work out who's, who's playing which roles and what, what parts. Yes. But we have to understand that we've co-created it. So this reality is, this is the as is. He's playing video games. He's reacting in this way. So what can you do to move forward? What can you do to make a difference? How can you change it? You can't force your child to change. The only thing you can do is change yourself. Mm -hmm. And in changing your part to play, it will bring about a change in the, in the child's um, part to play as well. It's like actors on a stage. Yes. You know, they each have a part. And they each learn their part. It takes a while for it to become automated and kind of autopilot. That's like our families. You know, we each have our part to play. So we play our parts beautifully, but those parts become, it becomes a pattern and it becomes the mm. reality. So in order to change the reality, the actor can't say, or the director can't say, I am forcing you to change the way you're going to do this. Because <laughs> the actor could go, well, I'm not changing. Yes. So as parents, we try and force our children to change. You are not going to play on those video games. And they're going to go, well, make me, yeah. you know, or they ignore the limits or they're rude to you or disrespectful or they sneak the iPad in the middle of the mm. night. You know, you've locked it away and they find it because you can't force yes. a, a change on a child. So the magic happens when we are the change. Yes. So in this mom changing something in the way she's playing her part, either changing the screen that what he's watching, changing the amount of time he is watching, changing her interactions with him mm. when he's in a in a having a, a in an emotional storm, changing her interactions with other things, it will bring about a change in the, in the child's behavior. It can't not. Yes. Yes. Um so we have to accept the patterns that are and that's okay, but that doesn't mean we're permissive to them. We're not yes. going to let just accepting doesn't mean giving into and being permissive to. Yes. But we have to accept it because if we don't accept it, we resist it. If we resist it, they the persist. situation persists. Yes. So it's a powerful moment to realize that we actually can change our children. Yes. Not that we want to, but you know where, I, where yes. I'm coming from. The only way we can do it is through changing something within ourselves. 
that's perfect louise and i'm gonna just wrap up with our actions because again we're all about actions so one of the things that we said was go get some additional resources at commonsenses.org and i'll put the link to that um in the show notes also look at the content not just the time that your son is on but the content that that he's watching try to share information with him about the the purpose and the design behind games and how they're designed to control and to be addictive so that he can feel more empowered with his choices i would also say also give a, a countdown so if you have if you know that he's he's on for 15 more minutes of his allotted time give him a countdown you've got 15 more minutes you've got 10 more minutes five more minutes make sure you're wrapping up so it doesn't feel like i'm in the middle of a game and you've stopped me but i know that it's coming and it's something something that i'm working towards the big one validate his feelings not his behavior but his feelings create a safe space so that he knows you he feels heard and he feels seen um and he knows that you're there for him and really look at the patterns of co-creation within the home how as a parent are you showing up to, to co-create this behavior and what changes can you make within so that we can shift the result of the behavior that we're getting. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Louise? One other, just one other small one. It's a big one, but I don't want to forget it, is that there are um, professionals out there who can help children with their self-regulation. Mm. And, you know, this child, it might be very hard for this child to be able to control himself. Mm. And he might need more help than his mum can give. And there are various um, systems out there. Some of the schools have great uh, self-regulation You could teach, uh, you, could, you could ask the teacher and say, you know, I'm struggling with emotion coaching at home. What do you use at mm. school? So at least you're both using the same things. And to find out whether is the aggressive behavior translating into school as well. Are the teachers seeing it or is it just at home? Uh, it might be valuable things for this mom to explore. That's really great. And I think um, just, just piggybacking on that point, mindfulness practices works wonders with kids in terms of helping to self-regulate. So adding a few of those to the family routine um, just before bedtime, in the morning, even after dinner, mindful eating, mindful listening, just adding those practices can help really just help that child self-regulate as you go forward. And using his breath, just saying to him, using just take breath. a deep breath. Because you know what it's like as an adult, you just go... <sighs> And the minute your shoulders drop, you're like, okay, bring it on. Okay. <laughs> Thank and you so much. It has the same effect on kids. It does. Thank you so much for joining us, Louise. I really appreciate all the support you've given to our village. And I just want to remind everyone that they can find more information about you and your amazing coaching work at yourparentingpartner.com. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We're all about sharing and support in this village. So if you found value in this episode, be sure to share it with your family and friends. And remember, this is a weekly show. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified of our next episode. As we always say in the village, you're just one connection away. With love and gratitude, empower us. Until next time.